Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is the Feldfire Gaze channel where we discuss everything about demon hunters in World of Warcraft. Today I come to you with a commentary video of a Mythic Plus dungeon, an Eltharus Plus 26. This is a pretty high key, it was executed pretty smoothly with some mistakes here and there, but uh, we managed to, to make it until the end. You will see me play the single target focused build, although it's a um, fortified week. That's because there are a lot of uh, chain pulls in Eltharus, so most of the trash is dealt with the chains and we use the single target build to kill the bosses. So this is the build that I have been working with. You have network again for burst damage, especially on last boss, it can be super useful. And with the single target and the leads, you expect to sustain all the bosses, like the mammoth, which does tons of uh, ticking damage, as well as the boss with the chains and the last boss. So without further ado, let's get into the video. At the beginning here you will see me promoting the tank to leader. It's uh, pretty standard, it helps the healer to align the frames better for healing. Now this first part of the dungeon is kind of AFK. We just wait the tank to grab the things around. We don't do any damage to avoid taking aggro. I can purge the shield here. Purge does not uh, cause any threat. So we're slowly gathering the pool. This is pretty standard for Neltharus. Here you will see the mobs do not really cast anything. At some point I do a Chaos Nova and then a Fear. A Fear is a really good setup for the chains because all the mobs stay there, they don't move at all, so you can easily line up the chains. Now we have the spiteful, I kite the spiteful a little bit. Yeah, I lost a lot of damage with my eye beam here, it doesn't matter too much because we just move on and kill the minibus while working our way to the first to the first um, room where we will do the first massive pull with bloodlust. So you know you start by doing a huge change pull, then you do a huge pull with cooldowns and later on we will keep rotating between the two. For some reason here my tank just runs ahead, they don't want to wait for the miniboss. Maybe we should have all rushed ahead and just do the pull and wait for the miniboss to join us. But uh, we wasted a little bit of time here, running back and forth, killing the miniboss. We were a little bit um, non-decisive in our path. It is what it is, we move on and we will do a big pull here. These uh, Thaumaturg mobs are the ones that you are looking for, they both have the AOE of uh, this magma bolt that they do and they also transform the small elementals into the big elementals which directly causes a wipe. Here we send every button, of course, potion, metamorphosis, everything. I think I did not have the 3 minute uh, DPS trinket yet. This is an older video and uh, yeah, I'm running the beacon and the passive trinket. But uh, definitely if you can run the 3 minute cooldown buffing your meta, either the trinket from Halls of Infusion or the trinket from um, the Mega Dungeon, you should do it. Here you see me, I stay behind and I single target this mob, although the group is moving ahead and I'm not doing AOE damage, doesn't matter, I want to stay behind and single target that specific mob because it's uh, one of the main reasons you might wipe on this trash. Other than that there is nothing too special with these mobs, you try to kick this uh, molten something ability, how it's called, that transforms the small elemental to the large one because this is an insta wipe and here I kicked one, the other one got knocked, I send the fear and we just keep doing damage, we're sending everything on cooldown. Once this mob is dead, the rest of the mobs don't really do much, like you need to avoid some stuff on the ground, the elementals don't really do anything unless they are transformed and it's a pretty free pull after that. We're cleaning up and we are preparing to move to the boss. Here you are of course on the I-beam, everything is 50% uh, HP, so 
even though they're not threatening you need to to get some time so I send every cooldown here but as you can see like no one drops the tank is very good actually she was not taking damage throughout the dungeon most of the time so the evoker even grabs me telling me like yeah this pool is over stop bothering come kill the boss <laughs> He even grabs me on top of the boss and we just finish the ads here while they join us. So here I try to bait the charge against the wall. I did not manage to, the charge went on a different target. So the boss is all across the room and I lose tons of DPS. Here you will see I send the essence break. Now I have a demon. I should be sending my trinket here now with a demon buff, so plus 20% damage. The charge now is baited against the wall. This is a way better charge because we can get back in melee range. Now you will notice when the boss does the lava spray, if it's targeting you, you can shadow meld it. Now it's not targeting me, it's on the paladin, but uh, it's something useful to keep in mind. Shadow melding this will reduce the damage you take and make the healer's life way easier. Here I tried to meta the AOE damage but I was a little bit too slow. I don't think was a co this was a correct meta. I should have waited now, I lost a lot of uptime. I should have sent the meta after the charge. Yeah, always try to bait the charge against the wall and uh, make sure you can blur the AOE or you can darkness even you, sh you look at your heal and see how good well they manage the charges are mid on the wall that's a good thing we don't have to run too much and uh, save your shadow melt for level spray if you are targeted so yeah this is a pretty straightforward boss it all comes down to whether your healer is able to heal through it or not here I get a demon I kill the demon and I go into an essence break and I send the darkness here to reduce the AOE damage I noticed that my whole group was uh, stuck there the charge went on me the boss has been running away so you you lose up time when that happens but there's not much you can do about it you might notice I always send Vengeful Retreat after I beam. Sometimes this might be a mistake. I'm holding Vengeful Retreat too much sometimes. You blur the AOE, the boss died. It's okay. So this was pretty chill up to now. Overall this is a very good group. The tank and the healer are very knowledgeable of the fight. So we have really good control throughout most of the pools. So here we're moving towards the change room. We don't have any cooldowns at the moment, but uh, this is the time for change. So nobody has cooldown on change. We do a huge chain pull, then we use our cooldowns on the boss, and then we do chains again, and then we use our cooldowns again. So this is the the nature of the beast in this dungeon. You rotate between DPS cooldowns and chains. You gotta be careful here. You will notice the the Kualashi mobs that jump on people and leave a bleed on you this bleed hits for tons, especially on fortified so if you see a mob jumping on me I will immediately blur blur is coming off cooldown right now yeah of course you're looking for the frontals there are some kicks here and there I do some chaos nova here because I noticed the mobs are getting out of control I send the fear, this is a really good fear as you see it stacks the mobs nicely so we can land the chains easily then we get 20 shades and we need to kite them until they die there is one mob left but it's not too bad we'll probably just pull it into the boss we now have every cooldown for the boss here you will see me putting some markers on the ground for the chains I like to always do that to make the fight easier for my teammates now I lose some DPS but I set up the boss fight I tell them that I will do purple and they did not manage to to say what uh, everyone will be doing normally I try to use the class colors so here we have a priest 
so I use the skull marker which is white color for the priest purple for me and green for the evoker other than that I pull with every button I notice someone stands on the mark that I intended to use so I stay away but this is an example of how you can let's say solo raid lead. you can help your teammates uh, do the mechanics and make it easier for everybody we're not on comms or something but uh, you can communicate some stuff now here it's an important thing you do the essence braid combo inside the plus 50 percent damage that the boss is taking here this increases your damage by a lot other than that it's recent rinse and repeat and i hope my teammates respect the markers you see the evokers already standing on green He does the jump, the priest dispersed, probably a good call. So here I know I will not have too much uptime for a while due to the change. I go to my marker. No, my teammates do not really respect the markers, so we will do more chaotically. In my opinion, the last round was way better because we were super coordinated and the chains were down pretty easily. Now see here I have the hand and I have essence break and I use everything inside the plus 50% window. So this is a lot of damage here. And the Glaive Tempest as well. And I get the double death sweep? Yep. I managed to get the second death sweep within the demonic window and we keep pumping from here. Now the boss we will jump and after the jump he will do the change again. Yeah, there is a wave as well. We're doing as much, much damage as we can. We need to survive a last set of chains. Now it's extremely important to not die while you have the chains. Here I even use netherwalk because I wanted to be sure that I'm safe. Because if you die while having a chain the team is not able to complete the mechanic at all so this is a disaster it's most of the time a wipe here I send all my damage within the 50% I send the trinket if you notice the trinket crit for 2.3 million it's an extremely good opportunity to send this trinket within this extra percent damage time window moving on like I said earlier, there is another pool with chains. Here it's a similar logic. You watch out for the jumps and the bleeds. You want to use a personal if you get targeted. Uh, I use Chaos Nova when I see that uh, too many frontals are being casted and stuff. When the mobs are ready for the chains, I use my fear to set them up and then I send some damage on them of course not metamorphosis you send I send essence break here and we get tons of sage again we're running you know sage lose 8% of their health per second so if you just kite them they slowly die there are some phoenixes though and we need to kill those so we're slowly DPSing the phoenixes and the hunter so I even send the hunt here I save meta because I know we're heading into a big pool. It's okay to send I-beam because I will hit some chaos strikes here, I will lower its cooldown and while we're watching towards the next pack I'm casting some Glaive Tempest, Blade Dance and stuff and I'm resetting my I-beam getting ready for a metamorphosis pool here. It's a little bit unforced that I get aggro so I abandon the pool I band on the phoenix is behind and I move towards the pool. Here it's important to take uh, notice of those fire elementals. These melt casts can really, really hurt. Here metamorphosis stops them in an AOE fashion. The, the druid uses the roar so we're trying to rotate some stuff. I drop the darkness because I feel like we don't have too many stops left and this melt cast can really destroy people. Here you will see I was not able to do the best DPS because I was a little bit scared. I was behind so I was hitting half the mobs with my AOE and stuff. 
but the damage was fine like most of the mobs are dead the pool is over this is not a super scary pool most of the time here I don't send the essence break I think I shouldn't send the essence break here yeah that's a mistake we're cleaning up here no need to send the essence break at this stage you will now see our tank slowly setting up the next pool we do have bloodlust available so if I remember correctly we use it to kill the mini boss stacked with some other mobs this mini boss can be really tough most people don't pull it especially on tyrannical but now on fortified it justifies to spend the last here so you see the trinket hit for 1.5 million on the bo on the boss let's say on the mini boss this was a little bit weird I was not able to DPS the mobs properly there's a lot of stuff to dodge here I managed to get the second death sweep which is good so we keep moving and dodging both the mini boss and the two adds that we pulled are throwing small pulls which are super annoying and you gotta keep moving all the time I managed to get the eventual retreat here so there's not too much to do you just keep doing damage and avoiding stuff uh, when the boss, the mini boss does the circles you pop a personal maybe because you take damage Yeah, and here you will see the unfortunate part I died together with my holy paladin and if I'm not mistaken you can see in the replay there was no swirly beneath beneath us and I think it was a visual bug because when my character died no swirly was there same with Paladin so luckily our team resurrects the Holy Paladin and we are able to make the pool I was not sure whether I should take the rest or not eventually I ended up taking it it was not sure if it uh, would save time or waste time instead of waiting for a normal res eventually I took it because I'm at the age, I'm pretty mobile, I saw the evoker took it already one thing you can take with you is that uh, when you die in mythic plus don't res immediately, like think where will I be resurrecting, how much time do I need to get there to join my team and stuff because it's not straightforward, like don't react stop, analyze the situation and decide now this was a very close call I think it might be a mistake to rest here because my team was cleaning up and now they pulled another pack while we were running so it was only three people dealing with the pack it's definitely inefficient at this stage I think that uh, getting rest would be better but the evoker released already so I might as well do the same so we ended up wasting a lot of time here due to this unfortunate uh, double death to the invisible swirly I think it was invisible at least the good part is I have every cooldown so I'm ready to do a big pull and blast I have pot as well so yeah we pull everything here and that's a good opportunity to pop every button and blast now I don't send the trinket I think it would be better to send the trinket before my metamorphosis it's not the end of the world so maybe I send it on the second vengeful retreat or right after I'm done pressing every button so here it's meta, potion, everything so here I just send it like this was inefficient, I should have waited like two seconds to get the initiative with Vengeful Retreat but there are also the Shades that are spawning and I'm splitting my damage between Shades and the actual mobs so this was even worse like the ideal situation would be to use the Trinket in the opener before popping any cooldown and this would only hit the interesting targets and uh, put it on cooldown before my Demon Hunter cooldowns 
we have the shades here, we slow them, we fear them and we move on here I have no cooldowns so I need to I need to focus interrupting since I'm not gonna doing, be doing super damage anyway that's for sure I need to coordinate my kicks and uh, chaos nova and stuff to stop as much as I can I don't have anything else, I don't have fear so I'm just waiting for my kick here Imprison does not work on these mobs, so I cannot use this as a stop. Sadly, we're not able to take Feller Option with the current version of the talent trees. So yeah, I send the essence break and I hope that my team is able to manage the interrupts. I only have the single target interrupts and I try to assist when I can. This part again is not one of the scariest ones, you need to not be on your tank to join Pierce Marrow and uh, you gotta kick the melts. The melts are what's gonna wipe you here, so yeah, if you are on comms of course it's ideal to have a good coordination on the AOE interrupts and on the single target one, so here I send Chaos Nova and I kick one more, I think someone else kicked it as well but yeah, you gotta control the melts and we're watching into probably the worst boss of the dungeon but it's on fortified so it's not too bad so we're cleaning up the last mobs here you notice I send essence break, I don't save for later because the mobs do have a lot of HP still so you will notice my eye beam will be on something like 20 seconds when we finish the pool perhaps even off cooldown so this is an extra eye beam that I will be using on the next pack or we pull the boss directly yeah we might as well pull the boss directly yeah the other pack is not part of uh, this route here you see I send the trinket immediately so now here you see I saved the death sweep to use it with the essence break to do a double death trip with my metamorphosis so that was a good opener here I had no DPS potion it's on cooldown I used it on the packs before but uh, we did a pretty good opener here with all of our buttons we started with the trinket like this is how you should be doing it you gotta yeah I here play a little bit safe try to dodge uh, swirlies this cost me some DPS we were fine this uh, this AOE phase I used Blair in the first one but I did not use anything in this one because I felt like we were pretty safe so I send the essence break here the boss jumps on the tank you need to be careful not to get uh, clipped by the tank there is an interesting thing that happened to me once here the boss knocked the tank into a storming into the cyclone of the storming and um, the knock was cancelled mid there and the boss jumped in melee range and killed me so it did not jump far away where the tank was dropped it just jumped on top of melee range and it killed me I did not expect that so you need to keep in mind it's quite possible that the boss jumps in a weird direction so keep your eyes on where the tank is and you have to be away from the tank. If the tank is near you in any way shape or form make sure you dodge him because he will kill you. And another thing here is when you pop darkness on the ground sometimes it hides the fire swirly so be extra careful like if there is a swirly and you put darkness on top it might make it disappear so here I use Blair again so be very mindful about it like when you drop darkness look at the ground and realize did we have um, a swirly here maybe we covered it with um, our darkness because this might make you die like I've died to these things lots of times so I'm telling you in advance so you can avoid dying yourself however we did a pretty good job overall I don't send essence break here I think because there is no point and yeah when we use uh, movement speed abilities be mindful that um, 
you might be pulling the other half of the room here you see me doing stupid acrobatics I was not able to get upstairs while waiting for the patrol now I'm I'm joining them moving on we have another change pool like I said earlier we keep rotating between cooldowns and chains it's change time yeah I think people were like uh, making fun of me that <laughs> I was not able to to climb here we will put the the bird in the middle we will put it uh, close to the chains and use it on them this is n no longer possible after the the patch if you if you are watching this we could be using chains on this uh, adds from the chain uh, part of the dungeon but the phoenix is no longer targetable in this run in the past we were still able to do it so we were pulling the phoenix it was a mess here I was getting knocked I could not get the chains I used netherwalk I ended up getting the chains yeah, it was not the cleanest but it kind of worked here I was uh, not really good with my essence break combo I even sent meta I think this was a complete waste here yeah mobs were dead already so sending meta here was not the best idea but the tank chain pulled so that's a good thing send the hand do I also send the trinket yeah a sarkar trinket with uh, initiative so it has extra chance for critical strike we're doing pretty good here if I'm correct these are the last mobs we're gonna kill like I said earlier this tank did a pretty good route here we break the shield of the lava color this is the most important thing focus down the shield and kick him after the shield is down other than that it's not a super scary mob keep sending everything it's immune to stuns and stuff so you you can only interrupt it with uh, regular single target interrupts so here for example I've been holding Venture Retreat for too long I did not send it during uh, I-Beam and I did not send it after that was a mistake here I send the last uh, Essence Break combo and we, we should be good to move on to the last boss yep that's a hundred percent so now we're slowly moving to the last boss we can pass through the two group of mobs here they do not really aggro you, you don't need anything, any sooth or something you just move in the path that the druid is indicating here over these two sacks so I notice here it's 26 but it's fortified so this boss should be pretty doable with five and a half minutes so you have to focus on doing the mechanics here of course you send everything on cooldown and you try to pump the boss with the hand, with Glaive Tempest, with Essence Break after you send everything and it's on cooldown you have a small window where you go look for treasures here I get the roses so I need to be in melee range to cast the roses when the boss um, transitions here normally we should be focusing the add but we're not like I'm casting the roses I had a pretty good uh, RNG here my position was good and uh, I was able to get the roses off easily sadly the paladin died and we had to to spend the combat rest here and we keep going here my meta is going to come back probably not the best idea to send it right now but if I send it right now I can still get uh, another charge if the boss lasts for so long for some reason so in that sense it might be a good thing but uh, here I end up trying to look for a treasure because I realized mm, I'm getting late 
I need to get a treasure because the boss will transition and I will not have a treasure. Here I got the rainstorms, which is one of the easiest ones. So we manage this transition as well. I could have blurred here, would make my healer's life easier because we were taking damage. I sent the hand here during the window with the extra damage. Now here is the thing, because two bosses in this dungeon have this um, window of taking um, extra damage. The Sarkar Trinket is pretty good because you can use it here. I tried to fit it in this window, I'm not sure if I managed to. Here I get a treasure, this is the roses, so I gotta be million range. I try to focus this out a little bit because it can be a pain in the ass during the AoE phase. Here I use Netherwalk and uh, use the Roses. Th this is another good use of Netherwalk during this boss fight and this dungeon in general. When you have a melee treasure that might be put you in a bad position and uh, you know that's the case, you can use Netherwalk to get out of that bad situation. Here uh, I have the charge which can be really good, eh, can be really tough, my bad when you are caught out of a uh, position but it will depend and I also don't have network so I might be getting unlucky here and having to, to use a charge here I managed to find a really sweet spot with nothing else I'm already in middle range I don't really move and we kill the boss so that was a pretty clean execution overall with a few deaths and some deaths to invisible swirlies here and there. If you're still here, thanks a lot for watching to the end. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand a little bit better how to play Havoc Demon Hunter in Neltharus. If you like the content, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Demon Hunter videos. If you have any ideas on what you would like to see next, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, see you in the next one.